and I just grab it and I throw it up. I said, nah, that's too good to be true. And that shit went in. All right, welcome back to Entirely NBA, hosted by Entirely Media. I'm your host, Darion Robinson. Kyle Murph. And today we got a special guest with us, Jeremy Lamb. What's up, man? What's good? <laughs> it's good to have you. Uh, before we even jump right into it, we did a post earlier in the week that we kind of want to get your opinion on real quick before we even talk about your journey. Is Boston a super team? Would you consider them a super team? I mean, I wouldn't say it's a super team. I think they they have no weakness. They have a lot of players that could be stars. But no, I wouldn't say it's a super team. They just got great players. Listen, I, so Kyle says it has to be definitive, right? You have to have three superstars, just like Miami had with Bosh, Wade, and, and Braun, right? But I said you can kind of get away with it with having two superstars and then surround them with a supporting cast and another all-star, similar to kind of like Phoenix had, right? Like when Phoenix was first put together with Katie, Brad, and um, – and book right they were like ah katie's on another super team but my opinion bradley technically after all the injuries was more like an all-star to me he wasn't a superstar so that would that's kind of where i got that that play from where you can have two superstars and an all-star and a supporting cast so the difference in boston like somebody like Derek white mm -hmm. yeah. no one expected him to be that good yeah but i feel like the system the coach Tatum, Jalen, they, he fits so well with them. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Nobody was like, oh, let's bring these superstars here. Yeah. Nah, they just made their team elite. My argument was that if you call someone a super team, it's almost discrediting to that team. Like, you got to give credit to the organization for building that team, Boston, like this year, to knock it down. Like, they didn't... They didn't try to do something to stop something else. They they drafted. They, they <laughs> did what they had to do for that team. Like, that's that's my reason. Yeah. No, nah, bro. No, nah, bro. But so that's that's saying that if you become a super team, no matter how you become it, that's discrediting them. And I, I get that aspect. But just the name. Just the man. Name. OK. <laughs> OK. Like, OK, see, bro. Right. So like right now, great young talent on that team. If if. Shea, which I, I'm starting to consider him one. If he becomes a superstar, a legit superstar, and then what if Chet becomes one? Then you got Dort. Okay, but hold on. But hold on. Mm -hmm. First, we got to see what do you consider a super mm -hmm. team? Yes. Yeah. So what's your opinion on that? Like me, I feel like a super team is when you bring all the best superheroes to one team. Uh, okay. Yeah, respect. But if you just build – and get better, y'all are a great team. Y'all not a super team. Mm -hmm. There we go. If that no, makes no, sense. I yeah. understand that. I appreciate that for clearing that up for me because we, I, I felt like I was right on that, but um, we're just going to jump right into it. <laughs> like, all of us, all of us, sure. you know, we all play ball. So what, what's, what, like, got you to start just to pick up a basketball? What made you just start playing ball? Um, I mean, my dad played. But I felt like they put a ball in my hand and I just, you know, start playing. Mm -hmm. I'd be outside shooting. And it was just, it was fire to me. When did you realize that you was, you was better than most when it comes to that? Because, like, getting to the league, that's just, that's a goal in itself. Um, so, like, when did you realize, like, NBA was your was your dream to get in there and just start that? Probably when, so I played in Peach Jam. Mm-hmm. And I had, like, I played good. Coach Calhoun, like, started looking at me or whatever. And he was sick. <laughs> like, he was sick in the hospital. And he flew out to watch me play. Yeah, that's when you knew. So I was like, oh, I might be able to do something with this. I like that. I like that. So you brought up your father real quick, which I saw a video that I'm probably going to use. Um, it was pre-draft, I think, you and him together. How much did he influence your game? A lot. I mean, he just, I told him, I was like, yo, I want to be great. Mm -hmm. And we'll be, we'll go to school at like 6 o'clock, getting shots up. School started at 7, 10. Mm -hmm. And he was just there helping me every day. He had camps in the summer. And we played one-on-one -on -one like every day. So, 
a lot. I like that. I like that. Let me pivot real quick. We'll come right back to basketball. But I've been following you for a while. So when we talk about fashion, man, where where did that come from? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. To be honest, I don't even like. I don't love fashion. I just. I just like to, you know, take care of myself mm-hmm. and we're good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like that. So, you know, you put some on, you feel good, play good, and it's just like a lifestyle. I want to talk about that college recruitment because that's a staple for your journey, man. Like when we talked to a group, just a, a consensus group that we talk about, you know, guests that we have, basketball, shit like that. We brought up your name and the first thing they said was, what, what, what did you say? Yeah, you oh, like, Jeremy. Like, you Lamb. Kind of Jeremy Lamb. <laughs> I said, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, what, what was that recruitment like, man? What was your journey like? And did you consider any school other than UConn? Yeah, uh, it was crazy. So, uh, I wanted to go to like Georgia, mm. Georgia Tech, because um, I'm from Atlanta. Yeah. But I don't know. It didn't work out. And the first school. Like the big school mm-hmm. that started recruiting me was UConn, and uh, I just felt like they actually liked my game. Yeah, other people just came in after, just was like, "Oh, this, uh, you know, he's good. He could be good. Let's see what he do." But UConn was like, "Yo, like, I like this kid." So I went out there, they showed love, and that was the best decision, best decision I made. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, to have one or oh, a big school like UConn coming out there, like that's that's tough. Yeah, I'm gonna say, especially like speaking, like everybody knows about uh, Kimball Walker. Like, how was it playing with him? Like, just playing alongside him and just being able to help out and get that championship. It was crazy. He just he made it easy on. Me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Everybody was like focused on him. And I mean, me, I was just like, I never been that player that's like super confident. Really? And he had all the confidence in the world. And he just, I don't know, he just put that on me. Pause. <laughs> and we just, <laughs> we just accepted him. <laughs> so, like, his, his confidence on the court. Damn, I'm trying to figure out a better way to word it. Yeah. His confidence on the court, <laughs> pause, rubbed off on you when it came to <laughs> you being a better player. <laughs> and you being like, to, yeah. to uplift yourself to be a better player to help lead the team. Yeah, just like going through the tournament, going through the biggies. He was like, I remember he had ripped shoes. Mm. And he was like, man, I am I had 30 last game in these shoes. <laughs> He was like, I'm going to wear these again. I said, bro, get some new shoes. He was like, nah. <laughs> nah, I'm wearing these again. <laughs> yeah, not to, and he was killing <laughs> <laughs> And then not, not to not to focus on Kimba too much, but that, you know, that just notorious, or that just greatest college shot ever. How was it watching that, like just being on the court, being beside him, watching him hit that game winner? To be honest, I can't even explain it. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, I still watch. I still watch it sometimes, and I'm like, man, like, you know, I was like living through that. Yeah, but I didn't know what I was going through. Right. Yeah. While Just I was going through it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's crazy about that because <clears throat> I've watched it a few times, and obviously, going up into this interview, I've, I've watched it a lot. What I see is not obviously hitting him that shot. I also see you wide open. And do you know that during that stretch in that tournament? You actually have one of the highest three point percentages in NCAA history by a player who has reached the Final Four. You were 11 for 15 that year. So I say that to say, as I'm, and anybody can watch this and replay it, you're watching Kim, but yeah, he's getting all the attention. He hits a shot. But you too, you were in a position where at that point in time, whether Kimba took the shot or you, Jeremy Lamb, took that shot, it was more than likely a knockdown. You, do you realize how well you were shooting at that time? You said. I had the best percentage in... <laughs> yes, you have one of the highest three-point percentages in NCAA tournament history by a player who has actually reached the Final Four. Yeah, I had no clue. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So, I mean, at that time, did you feel like you could shoot with the best of them? 
I don't think so. Mm. I was just like young, just going through it. Like, but nah, I don't. I didn't realize that. Yeah, bro. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Nice. Yeah, That's why. Yeah, 11, <laughs> 11, 15 is tough. I yeah. <laughs> say, especially in big moments like that. So, but yeah. So going in your freshman year. Like, when you were going into your freshman year, like you said already, like, you weren't the most confident player in yourself. You knew that you were good, but you weren't the most confident. Like, you were having some struggles. Um, what were some of the words of encouragement that Karan Buckler gave you while you were to get yourself back in shape? I actually didn't didn't talk to him till I, um, till I got to the league. Mm-hmm. You know, he was uh, in OKC. But I just, when I was in college... I literally just, all I focused on was, like, getting in the gym. I was in the gym, like, every night. And my my philosophy was I wanted to go to the gym when I knew everybody else was at the club. Yeah. Because I'm like, okay, they're not getting better. I'm getting better at this time. I gotta, I gotta get better. I have to be better than them. Mm. Whether that was the competition, my teammates, whoever it was, it's like, I mean, I'm trying to be great. So, yeah, that's how I went. Did you ever go out while you was out there, while you were in college, or are you just. (laughs) Yeah, my uh, my second year, I went out. (laughs) Step out a little bit. (laughs) It was stupid. (laughs) I mean. (laughs) <laughs> but nah um, But yeah my first year I didn't go out at all Well after Kimba left you're, you're the next man up So how did you feel like What was your mentality going in for that So you were already part of the championship Next man up What were your thoughts on, on being that guy you know? um, Honestly I wasn't I wasn't built for it mm. My second year We should have been way better Yeah um, We should have won again We ended up getting uh, Drummond, mm-hmm. Baz was our point guard. We had both right. Like we was nice, but I should have been like a better leader. But I wasn't built for it. Like because there were there were reports saying that like the chemistry was off because I had those big name players. They reports saying like the chemistry chemistry was off and that like there was just not team bonding and all that stuff. Or do you think you just played a major role in that, or that was just something that it didn't it just didn't play out as well. I just think we needed a leader, and I needed to be that leader. I don't know. I couldn't bring us together like I should. Yeah. Um, we had all the talent. We just saying we had we was cool, but we couldn't get over that hump because of I feel like my leadership. Yeah. See, I under- I understand that, but at the same time, like we see it with KD, right? all the scrutiny behind him just being a hooper. And I think, too, like, whether you're leading vocally or leading through just your play, like, you already, you already mentioned, like, you're in a gym. Now, I, the second year, I know you said you went out a little bit more, but I'm assuming you're still in the gym. You're still working hard. You're still yeah, game is playing. Yeah. So at the same time, do you think that, like, your play alone and the way you developed your game, that could have been all the leadership that you needed to provide? I mean, it could have been. And I know, like, after we won a championship, some people probably got relaxed. Yeah, it's a lot more than just you know leadership. Mm-hmm. But I definitely could have done more. Okay. But I, I mean, I was in the gym. I was working, but I ain't bring like everybody with me. Yeah. Like I could have, or should have. I feel you on that for taking that accountability, but at the same time, like. You can't, you can't make people want it as bad as you do. So I feel like, because you're doing, like, you're setting the example. You're going to the gym. You're doing what you got to do. You're still living your life. You're not just being, like, a complete gym rat. But, I mean, the dream was to get to the NBA. Everybody had that same dream when you go to, especially if you go in D1 to a major school like that. So, but yeah, I've, sure. I mean, that's tough. That's tough taking accountability. I say mm-hmm. it's very, like, like, that's, that's good to hear. But speaking yeah. of the, I'm going to say, but speaking of the draft, it's hard to describe like those type of dream like moments, but like how was that when you you knew that you you declared for the draft? You knew you were going to the like you you were going to the NBA. Like how was that feeling? It was crazy because 
everybody told me, like, go to the draft. You're going to be a top pick. You're going to be blah, blah, blah. But then, like, my first my first or second workout, I twist my ankle. Mm -hmm. And I was supposed to have, like, 12 workouts like that. I, I end up only having four. <laughs> Damn. So come draft night, they're like, oh, you might, you might fall out. You, you might not. But you still invited to the green room. It's like, shit. Mm. You know what I mean? If I don't get drafted, I'm sitting in the dream. I mean, <laughs> yeah. in the green room. But it worked out. And when I finally got drafted, it was uh, it was surreal. Yeah. It was an amazing film, sure. You were selected by Houston. Did they feel good about you? Like, even though they only had few uh, workouts with them with having that ankle, like, did they feel good about your game and, like, that you would be a good fit for the team? So, it's crazy. They didn't even – I didn't even work out for them. Really? Oh, word. And they uh, hit my agent. This was, like, two days before the draft. And they was like, uh, we want you, we want Jalen to come out. Uh, we just want to meet with him. So I told my agent, I was like, uh, I'm not about to go out there. He was like, nah, maybe you should go out there and just meet with him. I literally went and met with him and then left. Mm. And then they drafted me. Why didn't you want to meet with him? Because I just had, like, so many meetings and workouts and all this shit last minute. Yeah, dude. did. And uh, I didn't feel like going. I feel you. Just like I'm done. Okay. All right. So you play you play with Houston Summer League and then uh they send you over to OKC, which in hindsight, well I guess we're gonna figure that out, but I would assume in hindsight, being beside Katie and Russ, um, especially your first year, what was that like for you? What'd you learn? From Russ too. I learned a lot. I mean, I didn't realize it when I was going through it. Yeah. But they was uh teaching me how to be a pro. And vets are incredibly important mm. uh, when you first get in the league. Because yeah. it's, like it's like a kid. Kids don't know nothing. Right. Yeah. Um, and when you get in the league, you don't know nothing. So just learning from them, their work ethic, their habits. It was a blessing to be up on it. But it wasn't just them. It was Derek Fisher, Karan right. Butler, yeah. Serge Ibaka, Tabo Cephalosha, mm -hmm. Nick Collison. <laughs> I know, it's crazy. I learned from so many great vets. So, yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. Now, the, speaking of which, and I'm going to ask you, since you're coming off that year with, uh, with UConn, right, where you already mentioned the leadership wasn't there, you guys could have been better, et cetera, et cetera. That trade that, that actually brought you to OKC, I mean, phew, there was reports that that kind of fucked up, excuse my language, fucked up the chemistry. Um, so I want to talk about this would be your second time where you may have experienced that. Do you notice any chemistry issues that year or anything you would say is like, damn, we could have done this better or atmosphere-wise? Locker room. Talk. Wait, you asking me about the trade or the chemistry? No, no, no. The yeah, chemistry the when chemistry. you got to OKC. Yeah. That, was the, that was a huge headline that year. Like, ah, this mm -hmm. trade, yeah. Um, honestly, I, I, I didn't notice it. Yeah. Uh, but people still hate me to this day for that trade. <laughs> yeah. That, so that's what we're going to talk and about. I'm just like, I mean, I, I had no <laughs> right, bro. part in that. <laughs> yeah. But people hate me to this day. No, I see. I see. I liked it because I'm a KD fan. You know, and uh, we've been around that for a while. And when you came, I'm like, yeah, this is, this is going to work out. This is going to be tough. So I, I respected it. But for you to come in the league, get drafted, have the excitement, go through all that, and then get traded, what the what, – how did you feel about that shit? Like, damn, already? That was crazy. I remember I got the call. They were just like, yo, we traded you. I was like, y'all just drafted <laughs> Yeah, right. I just got here, bro. <laughs> it's like, give me like, wait, I, I can get traded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah, I'm sorry. I was like, all right. <laughs> and that's how it went. Speaking of that, so did you have any, like, bad blood to them? Or you was just like, hey, I guess this is the name of the game now I'm in the league? Or Yeah, no, I ain't had no bad blood. It was all love. I mean, 
my dad called me. He was like, yo, that's the league. Mm-hmm. Like, that's how it go. You know? But I, I was just happy to be there. I wasn't, like I said, I never was, like, confident. Mm-hmm. I just was, like, a, I felt like I was regular. Mm. So I was like, okay, I got traded. It's all good. So uh, pre-draft, you were quoted saying, I just want to, I just want to go to a good, uh, be in a good situation where there's opportunity for me to play. Looking back, is like, are you still, you still stand with that? Or are you happy how your, the beginning of your career started? I'm happy just because I would have played in Houston. Yeah. Yeah. But I wouldn't have learned as much. It was me and a whole bunch of rookies. <laughs> mm-hmm. I wouldn't have learned nothing. But then when I went to OKC, I just I was just learning and getting better, yeah. and getting better working on my game. So, you know, looking back at it, it was a. You said you continue to work on your game. How did your How did that change? How did those workout plans change? How did your focus change versus what you were doing at UConn? At UConn, I was like killing myself. Mm. Like every night, I'm in there trying to hit 800 mates. Yeah thousand makes let's see how many times when i got to the league it was more of like you know sharpen your skills sharpen your skills if i know i'm not gonna play then i'll work out longer if i know i might get some minutes just sharpen your skills so you can be fresh with the game because it's 82 of them mm-hmm. so i had to be ready kind of side note since you're talking uh you said 82 games are you a, um, do you believe in load management or do you think just thug it out, thug it out the whole year? I mean, for me, I like to play basketball. So, like, if I, if me personally, if I sit out a game, I might lose rhythm. So, if I could play, I want to play. Right. Now, if I am hurt to the fact that I can't, do what I do, then okay. But if I'm just trying to, but then again, it's different for LeBron and all them. They playing all the fucking through the finals. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So if they got to take a game off, two games off, do that. Yeah. But me, I was a role player. Like I gotta play. You uh, you mentioned earlier you hadn't spoken to um, Karan until your rookie year. What was that conversation like? It was love. He was just like, damn, you made it, young fella. <laughs> yeah. And he was he was like, bro, watch and learn. And I was just watching and learning. <laughs> mm-hmm. But it was love, though. Like, the UConn family is fire. Right. So he definitely looked out. And, um, yeah, that's the homie. So if we could sum up your OKC to one chapter before we move on to the next one. What do you think the greatest lesson you learned during that chapter was? Just don't take that shit for granted. Yeah. I mean, he took, I remember Russ one time, I was in the shower. The trainers came in, they was like, yo, you got to get treatment. You got to do this, you got to do that. And I was like, um, I got a dentist appointment. Mm-hmm. And uh, they was like, so you can't get treatment. <laughs> and I was like, my dentist appointment in like 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. And Russ walked up and said, remember why you got a dentist appointment? <laughs> I'm saying, like, what you mean? He was like, you think you'll have a dentist appointment if you wasn't in the league taking care of your body? And yeah. I'm saying, like, he said, bro, go get treatment. And when you go to the dentist, tell him you're going to be fucking late. Oh, shit. I was like, say less. <laughs> say less. <laughs> Go get my treatment real quick. <laughs> right. <laughs> real quick. <laughs> I like that. So so having Russ cool, having Katie cool, who do you think the 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 I don't want to say the clo- the person you got closest to, but someone you remember the most from that time? Just from OKC. Someone I remember the most. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Probably someone not on the team. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. But no, nah, I just I just remember like I don't know, just all the fucking rookie hazing and <laughs> the hard times through that time that I didn't realize 
how they were like helping me. Right. But yeah, they was they was on my ass. <laughs> But it's all love. Yeah. And just to backtrack a little bit, you know you did score your first um career high on Houston. Yeah. I forgot so. <laughs> mm-hmm. But do you think there was some yeah. like do you think there was some like proving a point in that one or it was just another game? It was just something else, you know. Y'all lost. Well, to be honest, I wasn't thinking like that because I wasn't getting a lot of minutes. Mm-hmm. So I was just thinking like, oh, I'm about to play the homies. Um, but that game, AD was like, "Yo, like go he was throwing, he, he was throwing to me like, yo, go, like go." Sitting there like, what? <laughs> Coach put me in a little earlier, and um, I had a good game. But they like it was them that like that pushed you, helped me. Yeah, All right. so, so it was dope. So so the confident players that was on the court that live off that confidence again gave you that confidence to, to go out there and play, which is, uh, For sure. which, is which is basically what I'm, what we're going to bring you to my next point. So after that chapter in OKC, you got uh, traded over to Charlotte to go mm-hmm. back, connect with, uh, with Kimba. Was that an easy, easy move over there for you? Cause you just go into something that's already familiar where, you know, you have that leader leadership in there. So you don't have to worry about being a leader. You don't have to worry about being a scorer. You just got to go over there and just play a role. Like you said, yeah, it was, it was better because when I first got traded to OKC, I knew nobody over there. Mm-hmm. So it was like a, it was like uncomfortable as fuck. But then you go to, you know, Charlotte where you know somebody. It was like much more comfortable. Obviously, I had played with him. And um, after that, it was fun. You know, that Charlotte team, looking back on it, it's I guess tough. It was tough. It was <laughs> tough. It, it tough as team, in my opinion. Al, having Al Jefferson right out, then you also had obviously you, Michael Kidd, Gilchrist, uh, Jeremy Lin was on that team. I mean, he's three years removed from Lin Sanity, but he was over there with you. Courtney Lee, Batum. I mean, the team was tough, bro. Yeah, we made the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. One of the biggest things that you're known for besides UConn. Are those two game winners, one late game basket, but two huge ass game winners, both against the Raptors, by the way, bro, bro, we got we got to talk about that. Run down that first one for me. I don't even know how that shit happened, <laughs> but it was crazy because so K K was being guarded by Kawhi, mm-hmm. and they were supposed to switch on the screen but before it happened coach was like yo don't screen because Kawhi would have switched on to me mm-hmm. so he was like yo Jay Lamb just go get it but he didn't tell Kimber oh shit so Kimber was ready for the play but I just broke the play <laughs> and when I went and got, if you go look at the video Kimber is like yo what the I saw that <laughs> I said, damn, damn. Yeah. He's, t- he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> but then he hit it. I just grab it and I threw it up. And I was looking like, wait. I said, they got a chance. <laughs> that shit might go in. I said, no, nah, that's too good to be true. Yeah. And that shit went in. Yeah, it did. And for, for those that can't remember who was on that Raptors team, which, again, you beat them twice. <laughs> Who was on that team? That's the same championship Raptors team that won that year. And you said Kawhi, yeah. Pascal. Mm-hmm. What's the little short dude that was like Drake? <laughs> no, uh, Fred, Fred Van Vliet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Marcus Saul, Lowry's on that team. Danny Green. Yeah, that was a tough team. Yeah, and y'all beat them twice. So yeah, that was a good game. yeah. So that was the first game winner, and then shit. What? What was it? Let me see. Not even two weeks later. You hit a you hit a, a late game three with three seconds left to beat him again. <laughs> so my question is, bro. Obviously, obviously, you say you didn't have no confidence. <laughs> you had to have confidence to hit to hit these late game winning shots, bro. I just felt like that was. Uh, I don't know. I just felt like it was like meant to be. Yeah. Yeah. So when he when he sent me, I mean, when he passed me the ball, I was like. 
I got to hit. Take advantage of the opportunity. Mm -hmm. It's like a move. And then uh, I think that same year you had dropped again. Uh, it might have been one of those games. 32. So I think that I think that's one of your career highs too. 32 fucking points. What's it feel like to be in a zone like that? Felt good. I don't know how to explain <laughs> it, but it felt good. See, like the basket was just wide open. Mm -hmm. you know, or does, like knowing mm -hmm. that you like you, it just feel like you don't respect anybody that's in front of you. Mm. Yeah, that's you get that killer mentality. Mm. It's like you yeah, just can't it's just go like there. time. It's time. You either gonna follow me or I'm gonna get a bucket. Like once you started getting a little bit more playing time, you started being more of a a bigger role in, in with teams. Did your confidence start building, or did anybody ever like coach you about confidence? Or you just kind of just like, hey, I know I'm good at basketball. It's gonna come. No, nah, I mean people tried to tell me, like Kim used to tell me, like, bro, like, go ahead, bro. Like you, you nice. You could do, you could do that. But I just. I don't know. I never was the one to come out and take 25 shots. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I should have. I didn't. Why do you think you didn't? Like I said, I was never that confident person. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I never was like, oh, I'm about to kill this motherfucker. <laughs> no. Yeah. I just was like, I'll, I'll give him 20, mm -hmm. 25. Somebody start talking shit. Maybe I'll give him third. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, <laughs> dude, man. Like, I'm, I'm not trying to make you reminisce on the past and be like, make you feel bad about anything you did. Because that whole time we was going through it, I'm like, man, it, this can really give buckets, you know what I'm saying? And, <laughs> and you just were chilling, bro. I should have did more. <laughs> nah, you're, nah, you're nah you the should. career is straight. Career is straight. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> so after, after staying in Charlotte, you ended up in Indiana. That was a great team. Um, mm -hmm. you were uh, you were part of that second unit, which was outscoring teams by 18 points. Like, yeah. what do you think the chemistry was there? Like, what what got y'all clicking so well when you got over to Indy? Um, I don't know. We just clicked. We just clicked. We had Malcolm. Yeah. And you had me at the two. Yeah, two day one. Mm -hmm. And we had uh, Domas and Miles. And we just was, we were just clicking. I remember uh, me, Malcolm, and TJ Warren, we were averaging like 18 plus. Yeah. And then, you know, Miles, it's easy with him. He set a screen, he either going to roll or pop. He could do either. <clears throat> um, we was just getting buckets. So was there, was there a leadership in there? Did you feel like you were playing that leadership role in that in that unit, or did you was it just everybody clicking and whoever's night it was was the one who was going to get the buckets the most? I definitely led by example at that time. I had a lot more years than other people, so they looked up to me. Yeah. But yeah, we just clicked. You know, Malcolm, he's from Atlanta, from Atlanta. Yeah. So yeah, we was just. It was it was a it was a good team. Sure. Now you guys were true. You guys were on a streak, um, looking good. Obviously, like we just mentioned. But then, and I, we're going to talk about this because I want to get your your how you feel emotionally about it. But damn, bro! Then you suffered uh, a devastating injury, and obviously, I, I yeah. saw this. I was actually watching that game before you left. You hit two free throws. So, the just the mental part of that, and obviously the physical battle to get back to like like you're still doing now. What do you go through? What is that for you, like, mentally to go through something like that and try to be who you were, get back to who you were? It was definitely tough. Yeah. It was definitely weird, too, because that was my first injury. People always people always say, like, life goes on. Mm -hmm. But COVID hit. Yeah. So life stopped. So for me, it felt like man, I got hurt and then life is over. <laughs> yeah. Um. But kept working, kept working, kept working. The first couple of games that got back, I played well. But the thing about the league is 82 of them. Yeah. So you can play good for the first 10. But then the next 10, then the next 10, 
and next to him. So that was the tough part, just as I'm getting older, recovering and trying to stay solid, um, dealing with politics, mm -hmm. new draft picks. Uh, it was a lot against me. Yeah, I know, like, especially going through, like, an injury because not <laughs> no comparison at all. Um, at the same time, I'm just coming out of college, and then I tore my Achilles for the first time. Like, it was my first injury, and I tore my Achilles, and then the world stopped. And I'm like, what the hell? Like, And then when I got back just playing pickup and everything, I'm getting back out there. And like, I'm like, yo, I am, I cannot do this. Like, this is a whole different uh, whole different issue. Like, that, it definitely takes a lot of, like, mental stuff to go through. And I didn't even have all the, the resources that y'all had. So it's just like, yeah, so sure. I definitely feel that. After time in Charlotte, now that you're in Indy, you're going through the injury, how are you personally feeling at a, as a player at that point in time? I felt good. I felt like because the league had stopped, you know, I just felt like I wasn't missing nothing. And I got time. Um, but I felt good. It was a, it was a tough time though, but it wasn't like the worst time of my life because COVID. So going from Indy, you then get traded over to SAC. And honestly, that might go down as probably one of the evenest trades we've ever seen, which is crazy. Um, you and Sabonis, uh, Justin Holiday was in that, that trade, uh, for Halliburton, Buddy and Tristan Thompson. And obviously, you've seen what those two teams have grown into. You're part of that. Um, so, I mean, going from Indy to SAC, do you feel confident that you guys could do something or no? Yeah, I mean, shit, when we went over there, Domas was like, yo, we a couple games out the playoffs. We might be able to do something. Yeah. And I was like, yo, if we make the playoffs, then we definitely going to be back next year. Yeah. yeah. Cause I know it's about to like clean house and all that, but I just uh, I couldn't stay healthy, mm -hmm. and um, that's how it happened. Yeah. So unfortunately, they're like you know, unfortunately, like, injuries are part of the game. It's 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 messed up a lot of NBA players' careers. Um, what is some advice or just like some of some points to keep you like the up and coming hoopers or the people that are playing that get injured that could keep them in the same in the right mentality or right mind frame to keep going forward. I would just say like injuries feel like it's the end of the world, but it's not. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it feel like fuck me. Will I be able will I ever be able to run again? Yeah. Or jump like I used to. All them thought thoughts gonna go through your head. But <clears throat> it's not the end of the world. It's still hard work and attack like your injury like you would you know a basketball and you're uh currently still going through an injury right ankle injury yeah yeah how's that going for you right now doing all right yes yeah, all, right. <laughs> <laughs> all right cool that's what i like to hear but uh all the teams you play for all the locations that you've been in which one truly felt like home definitely sharp yeah, yeah I'm <laughs> I figured so. close to home so. <laughs> I mean, I built my crib out here, and uh, yeah, Charlotte is just so we're we gonna be out there in a couple couple weeks. Yeah, actually, my <laughs> man right here getting uh, he getting married, and their bachelor parties out there. So he'll be out there soon. Hit me. Mm -hmm. Hey, don't don't tell me twice. I will hit you. Up. <laughs> I will hit you in hit two me, bro. weeks. <laughs> kind of just kind of uh, just some other questions. Like, what is the hardest part of being of being a pro? Just being in the NBA. The distractions. Distractions. Think about it. You have access to whatever you want. Whatever. So you got to be disciplined and realize, you know, why you in the NBA? Do you actually love basketball? Or do you love this other thing? Right. So that's the biggest thing. That's the biggest thing. And you don't know who actually likes you mm. and don't like you right because everybody gonna act like they love you. how'd you deal with that so, i made some mistakes <laughs> 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 but no nah, i just tried to you know stay in the gym you know just understand why i'm here yeah you know what i'm saying i'm trying i'm trying to take care of my family trying to 
take care of my kids. Mm -hmm. I'm not just out here trying to party and, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, fuck off what <laughs> got me here. So I'm going to give you four names, and you tell me what's the most slept-on quality about these four players. All right? Okay. Number one, obviously, is Kimba. Number two, Durant. Three, Westbrook. And four, Jamie Lamb. <laughs> All right, so what's the most slept on on one. each of them? Yep. Yeah. Yep. All right, who's, who's the first one again? Kimba. I don't think he slept on at all. <laughs> what's the next one? <laughs> KD. KD is a killer. Yeah. He's a killer. Westbrook. Russ. He's a fucking great person. Oh, see, there, <laughs> that's a lot what I'm of saying. people say that. Yeah, a lot of like, players say that. He's a savage on the court. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> but he's a great person. I like that. I like that. And then what's the most slept on quality about yourself, bro? About me? Mm-hmm. People don't know that I'm actually, I actually have a personality. <laughs> I will. <laughs> people think like, you know, I'm just boring and just like, whatever. Yeah. But I actually want to be a comedian one day. Swear, bro. <laughs> yeah, you're lying, bro. <laughs> nah, you're lying. I do. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, okay. So you're a funny guy. But, uh, whenever you go out and do a show, bro, send an invite. I got I to gotta see you, man. I'll send it, bro. <laughs> I see <I'm> it. Fire. <laughs> That's tough. Kyle's got to... Uh, yeah. So I know you went through some injuries, and so we talked about the emotional aspect, but there's a great question Kyle's got for you. Um, so kind of the, kind of the same thing. There's four different players. So when it comes to injuries, it's part of the game. So if injuries never happened to these four players, which one do you think would have had the best career? Um, uh, it's more than four players, about five. Sorry. So it's uh, T Mac, D Rose, Brandon Roy, Penny, or Grant Hill. Who would have the best mm -hmm. career? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who would end up being the better player at least? So you know, T Mac is my favorite player all the time. <sighs> Yes, sir. He would have been stupid. <laughs> Wait, but then D Rose. Yeah, yeah. And you, but you he had that. limits. But Penny, I might. Well, I don't know because Shaq left Penny. Who was that? Who else? Who else? Who else? Grant Hill and Brandon Roy. Brandon Roy. I'll go Brandon Roy one and then T Max two. Because mm. B Roy was a was a problem. Mm. <laughs> he played B. like Roy a video game. Tough. He played like a video game. <laughs> he was stupid. Man, I, I I caught you on that. What you mean D Rose has some limitations? He can't shoot. <laughs> hey, man. He can't That's, shoot or he, hold on. <laughs> he can't shoot or his shooting is not the best part of the game. I'm he asking, couldn't I'm shoot. Asking. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, bro. Okay, okay, okay. Well, 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 the, the buzzer beater, the back. Yeah, okay. Back well, I mean, it was a bank shot. It was a bank shot. I mean, he had a little midi. <laughs> but. Word, okay. <laughs> okay. But that's shoot. what you living with. Yeah. 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 Ah, that's a good point. You know right. what I'm saying? Some people, it's like, nah, don't let them get to the midi. Yeah. Don't let them get to the, you know. What's crazy so. about you saying that is that you yourself had a midi. I, I mean, honestly, J. Lamb, I consider you a scorer. So let me ask you then. You got three these three players, which I think are probably – I ain't going to say LeBron, uh, and I'm not going to say Kobe. Well, I just want to talk about legitimate bucket getters. So my, my top are obviously KD, Melo, Tracy. You put those three in a room together, on the court together, I should say. Who's coming out on top on some 1v1s? KD, Melo, Tracy. On one-on-ones? Yeah, king of the court. Well, I, I mean, KD. That's what I said. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, KD. I mean, he he he's one of the best shooters of all time. Yeah, yeah. He can really shoot that shit. Melo definitely can shoot, but you know he took a lot of shots. Mm -hmm. KD would have like thirty five <laughs> on eleven shots. <laughs> shots. Yeah. It's crazy. And if he get hot in a one on one. Oh yeah. What, what, what do you honestly think you're going to <laughs> say? <laughs> Literally ain't no stop. Not much. Yeah. Just kind of wrap it up. Just kind of some closing questions. Um, not to get too deep or just reminisce, but if you could go back to your 18 year old self, um, what's some advice that you would give yourself? I would. 
I mean, this is different, but I would probably tell myself making it to the NBA is not life. It's not the end goal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because the NBA is a fake world. We live in a fake world. We get everything free. Everyone loves us, but that's not life. And once you retire, then you live life. So just taking it for what it is. I'm glad you um you bring that up. Um, cause it actually segues into my next question. So what is life, or at least what I've seen from afar from you is, um, the children that you've had. So being a father, what's one lesson that, um, that you have or eventually want to instill into your children? That's a good question. I have learned that my kids looked at, they look at everything I do. Yeah. So, and they believe anything that I'm telling them. Mm-hmm. So just trying to teach them to be great uh, people, but I don't know. That's a loaded question. <laughs> I know. I'm well, free to think about it. A loaded it. question. <laughs> so I, I might got the same kind of a loaded question too when it comes to like why you were playing, having those mentors when you went to OKC and then all the, the teams you played for and everything and having those vets there and becoming a vet yourself. Did anybody give you any financial advice or just like any like thought process on what you're doing after the league, even though you're young and you're like, man, I'm, a, I'm, I'm an NBA. What are you talking about? I got all this money. I got all this stuff. Like anybody actually kind of coach you when it came to that? They definitely did. They told me oh, a whole bunch of times, oh, think about what you're going to do after the league. I'm like, what? All right, what? I'm going to play forever and I'm going to die. <laughs> but the best advice would just save your money. Right. Save your money. Don't take risks. Just save your money. And um, that's what I did. So All right. I'm happy yeah. that I did. And that was the best advice I could get. With what you saved and that advice that was given to you, did that give you any thoughts on what is next after you hang up the jersey, after you retire? Or are you just you still thinking or have that plan in place? So, you know, last year I played in the G League. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And um, damn near every team I played against, Every player on the other team told me that they looked up to me or, you know, tried to play like me or whatever. So that made me realize that I probably want to do, like, player development, um, coaching, because I can help these little kids. I mean, so... So I'll probably do something in that, in that field. And stand up, don't forget, don't forget stand up. Oh, st- yeah, st- <laughs> oh, yeah, I got you that one time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Jeff T, um, we, we were just talking about this. He has said that you know, for as long as you're in the league, you're devoted to just the league. Like your whole goal, up until the point you get there, even after you leave, is is being a ball player. And he said a lot of times after you leave, you don't know what the hell to do with yourself. So you either go broke, you go into a depression, which you know, sad. I get it. Um, but there's a lot of feelings that come with that. And so I'm glad that you just said you went, you know, that experience in the G League kind of put that into your mind that, OK, I could do something afterwards. But I got to ask, because yeah. I mean, you're still you're still technically on that team. So when you do hang up that jersey, do you think or at least what what is it right now besides development, besides comedy that you enjoy doing the most that you you say, OK, shit, I might be able to do something with that. Now I just work out. <laughs> mm-hmm. And chill, like I, I'm, I, I, I was never good at anything else. Uh, okay, okay. So I mean, I played darts. Yeah. I was nice at darts. I might go on a little like European dart tour. No, darts is tough. It's a lot harder than people think. Like I, I've yeah, that's hard. Like, that's shit tough. You don't play the game, man. You ain't you ain't on the duty two K nothing. I never played two K. Uh. No Call of Duty either. Nah. Okay. Oh, man. I'll be chilling though. I just I'll be chilling. As a as a non gamer, because if I do play the game, I do just play either Call of Duty. I, I retired 2K. I can't I can't do it no more. I can't do it. It's it's too frustrating for me. But Call of Duty relax and I get in there, get my two, three games in, <laughs> I'm out of there. <laughs> I got about maybe Yo, hold on. I did play Call of Duty back in the day. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. I But now it's changed. Oh yeah, for sure. Um <laughs> who do you think <clears throat> And I know you talked about all the fake love in the NBA, but who do you think, uh, out of all the players you played with, was probably your favorite teammate? I had a lot of great teammates. Yeah. Um, my favorite team. I mean, it's hard though. But I'll say two. I'll say um, Marvin Williams and Kimber and yeah. Kimber Walker. Walker. Yeah, Marvin was tough. They're my favorite team. Marvin slept on. Mm-hmm. But I had a lot of great teammates. Yeah. So let me ask you. TJ McConnell. Ah, TJ's a good one. I forgot you played with him. Malcolm Brogdon. Vic Oladipo. D Fish. Come on, y'all. Yeah. There's too many. I got a question for y'all. Yes, sir. Does LeBron <laughs> playing with his son make him the GOAT? This is a question for you, Darian. That ain't got nothing to do with oh, it. Oh, damn. Um, I re- does it make him the GOAT? Um, <clears throat> Does it make him the GOAT? <laughs> I I think, okay, so my honest opinion is if um, if there's many variables that go into being the GOAT, meaning like influence, not only your play on the court, but influence the shit that you do for league, that you do for yourself, blemishes, shit like that, then I, then sure, yeah, because that's never been done. Jordan couldn't even do it. Then sure. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Sure. <laughs> damn, 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 damn. Come on, man. Like, then, then. It don't sound like you really mean that. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm assuming, I'm assuming that uh, that you think it does. <laughs> it, it. I'm not. Well, first you of all, play with your. <laughs> hold on. First of all, that's saying that I don't think that Jordan, or I'm sorry, that Braun is, is is the goat. You're assuming that I don't think that. So what are you saying? <laughs> that's a good, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> now, nah, honestly, listen. So, uh, if you would have asked me a couple months ago, I still would have said Jordan. But um, we got some tapes in, bro, and it's crazy. So we got some tapes in from footage of literally Bronze High School career going up, and then I start, I got to thinking to myself, like, damn, bro, he was elite from that level all the way on. Never had a blemish. He's done all this shit. So right now, currently, yes, I do have him as my goat. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I do. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Damn, man. Go ahead. Tell you. Tell me your side. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, <laughs> I mean, wh- which one is more impressive? Oh, it's Brian by far for me. So you win three championships. Go go play baseball. Then win three more. Well, here's my thing. The reason I say bronze is more impressive to me is because, like, you saw you take you take the leadership and coaching that that um, those teams had from the Bulls that's carried over to Lakers. You saw the same thing with Kobe. He got five off of it. Now imagine if Braun had that same triangle offense, that same coaching, and was able to do that. I think he'd have five or six too, but he doesn't. He's never had leadership in the coaching that he's had over the years. He's pretty much damn near been the we, – we've seen this shit, man. Come on. He's pretty much damn near been been the coach. He's able to do it with the Cavs. Bro, Lakers. he's smarter than the coach. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I must yeah. say he's definitely the yes. coach. And he's smarter than the GM. Yes, too. that's what I'm saying. So he's pretty much, you know, done this. I'm not going to say all done by himself, but he's the head of that. So do it with three different organizations, play as long as he has, do all the things that he's done from a career standpoint, from a player standpoint. I just think it's the most impressive. Now, Jordan's a killer. I, I'm not going to argue anybody with that. Like Jordan. LeBron is the greatest player of all time. I like it. He has to be. Like he's playing with his son. That's <laughs> it's, it's, it is wild, that's bro. Different. Like, How you been playing that long? You played with your <laughs> right, no, right, right, right. I still got about two. I was hoping years. my son would see me play. <laughs> 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 he was hoping to get drafted with his right. son. Like what? I know. Yeah, and I, we were talking about that the other day. I think he's still got about two, three, maybe years of being dominant. Hey, yeah. hold on. Since we're on the same page. This motherfucker Man. over here is not. We actually, I didn't even release the podcast yet. I didn't say he don't like Bron. About, I didn't say he don't like Bron. Who don't? He don't? I didn't say I don't this like guy. Bron. He don't like Bron, I don't bro. Like Bron. I didn't say I like Bron. I didn't say that. I what got I the said. footage. I'm gonna send you the footage. I did say I don't like Bron, but I didn't mean it in that way. Let me explain. I am a like, oh you didn't. You like I am what? a Bron you said hater. You didn't like him, but you didn't mean it. <laughs> I am a Bron hater. That's because I'm a Kobe fan. But oh, I am a Bron wild. hater. But if I ever, but I'm I'm a sensible Bron hater. If that makes sense. No, it's, it's all contradicting. No, it it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's all contradicting. Like <clears throat> everything y'all said is right. Just give him one reason why you don't like Braun. I don't know. See, I told don't you like that. Him. I told you I just don't like Braun. I don't know why. You don't know. I don't know. I, and I and I even said it. It was a sexist. 
statement. Wait, you have no clue? <laughs> nah, I think it's because like, I'm a, no clue. I it's a Kobe. I'm a Kobe fan. I don't like. <laughs> I think it's because like I don't want to admit the fact that LeBron is my first better, is better than Kobe. That's why I don't want to admit it. <laughs> That's my thing. You're a real hater. <laughs> I'm a real hater. Kobe. I look, and I be I give everybody their flowers and their credit for whatever reason. Can't do it. I just can't do it. Even if I met him, I'm like, nah, fuck you. <laughs> like, you too good in the league. Get out of the league, retire. Give it to somebody else. But nah, but nah. That's what it be. Nah, this, uh, I'm not gonna lie. That's why when you asked the question, that's why I was like, this is all for you, Darian. This ain't got nothing to do with me. <laughs> this, is, this, is your, <laughs> this is your question. Facts. All right. Yeah. So, so now that obviously Bron's in your top five, who's the other four? If you had to draft a team. <clears throat> all right. So. Number one, I'm going to go Steph mm. at the one. Then I'm going to go Kobe mm. at the two. Then I'm going to go MJ at the three. Then I'm going to go Bron. At the four, and then mm-hmm. <clears throat> I'm gonna go Shaq. Shaq, so, yes, so my man, Shaq. my man. <laughs> when we did this discussion earlier, I, I literally kept thinking to myself, like, there's no starting five or no five I'm picking that doesn't have Shaq in it. Yeah, Shaq, yeah, Shaq uh, and um, Shaq or LeBron. Yeah, Shaq or LeBron. Yeah, those I'm two are definitely all the same. If you don't put them in it, the, I mean, I, you just I hate. I'm not that much. But hate. if I didn't, if I didn't take uh, Shaq, then I'll put uh, Jokic as all time. Mm, Jokic all time. Okay. <clears throat> I'm, mm. I'm not mad at. It. I I think Jokic is is tough. I think he slept on. I just think yeah. he ain't got enough years under him yet. What? To what? be called all time, I'm telling you, I, all time. I'm not, I got all time. Oh, okay. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm not okay. saying you're wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give it, when he retires, maybe. But right now, I, I, I just wouldn't give it to him now. Mm. All right. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. So you, that's your five. Give me a give me a two man bench. Seven players. Who who they're following? Two you'd pick then. That's coming off the bench. Yep. Just two. <laughs> Dylan. Dylan. Like right now, or just you said all the time. All yeah, time. all the time. It don't matter. I mean, the Jokic pick that that blew, that one blew me away. I didn't expect that, so I'm excited to see who these next all two time. are. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna go. Fox. Mm, what? Okay. At the one. Okay. <laughs> okay. I had to think for a second. I was like, yeah. Damn, <laughs> I was thinking Rick Fox for a second. <laughs> I'm, like, <Not> <laughs> I'm gonna go Fox. Then I'm gonna go PG. Mm, Indiana PG three one three. PG thirteen. That's tough. And then I'm gonna go. Mm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put it there. Wait, this is all time? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, PG. I wonder why PG and Kawhi didn't do more together. They ain't play together. Oh. It's, yeah, it's, it's got to be that thing. I mean, they got games in, bro, but every time PG, <laughs> you know what it is, man. Come on. They, could, get the they couldn't get no chemistry together. <laughs> Nah, that's what I'm saying. Like, nah, that was be- <laughs> nah, uh, <laughs> So speaking of that, kind of going back to the um, the first question, do you think that was a, considered a super team? Like this uh, last year, Clippers, absolutely. Last year, Clippers was a super team. Um, yeah, then they bring in, they brought in Russ, they brought in that Kawhi, PG. <laughs> they just brought everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Harden. I think they just brought Matt. So I, I didn't say they were a super team. Because I just thought they just brought mad names there. People were telling Russ to retire before he got to the uh, Clippers. And then James? And James wasn't even the James Harden. They were saying that he was washed. And James still nice. No, he is. But they were people were saying he was washed. So they were just like, you know what? Avengers come together. James is the James that people 
want him to be. He could still average thirty. He can, if he hundred percent, hundred percent. And I, and I, I also don't think Westbrook should retire. But no. I'm just saying, like, so if you have a third option that can average thirty, <laughs> it's a super team, bro. I don't want to <laughs> say it, bro. Well, I think it's. You know I think the only reason why I'm saying that, like on paper, yes, for sure. But I think the only reason why I'm saying that is because of how it played out. As we all, we saw how it played out. Like I told you, it's not about how it translates. Wait, you think it wasn't a super team because of how it played out? Yeah. Like everybody broke up. It, uh-huh. it broke up. That ain't I mean, what a super team means. No. Uh, I mean, how many how many super teams can you count that actually formed and won besides Miami and and Golden, and Golden State. State? Yeah, that's it. Name the rest that actually won. Uh, those None, are only right? super teams Boston. that I think exist. Oh, in Boston. Yeah. So that's what we talked about. Oh wait, Boston. Yeah, they were a super team for me. I think it's the only teams that existed for super teams, <clears> in my <throat> opinion. Okay, uh, K- Katie's Nets. Is that a super team? KD who? Katie's Nets. Nets. Brooklyn Nets that year or those years. Kyrie, James Harden. Yeah, that was a super team. Yeah. They had Kyrie, KD, <laughs> and James. Yeah, James. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, no. I don't know. I, I think you got to have some type of, um, I think you got to win. Success? Success. <laughs> get out of success. here. Success. Uh, get out of here. I feel like without a success. A super team don't always win. Mm-hmm. We're gonna we're gonna let you go, so we'll go ahead and wrap this up. But again, thank you for coming with us. Come on, shit! Thank you for joining us on the on the pod today. Um, and then we'll we'll, pause. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll, uh, we'll we'll be in touch, and uh, I'll let you know when it releases, and obviously tag you in any of the reels. But thanks, bro. We really appreciate it. Sure. And I hit for you up, sure, bro. Appreciate y'all, man. Thank you. And I hit you up in about two weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>